I lost my dog um, New Year's Eve. He had DCM. He was suffering for a while. And, uh, you know, he had many close calls with death. His lungs would fill up. But we... Uh, his lungs would fill up with fluid. We'd bring him to the vet. They'd give him shots, uh, double the medicine, and that extended it for a little bit. But um, he wasn't eating that day. And, you know, I brought, I brought him for a walk. He still wanted to go for a walk. He wouldn't eat nothing, though. And then I'm walk, walking around, and um, all of a sudden he starts walking really slow. So, you know, I'm petting him. I'm like, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Let's let me get back to the car. I start w walking back to the car. I look over my shoulder. I don't see him. I turn around. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Did he just drop dead somewhere? I start walking back. It was raining. And uh, it was cloudy. Not cloudy. It was foggy. And I, I walk up. And, and I see something on the floor. I'm like, God, no. God, no. God, no. Then as I approach him, I see it's him. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Maybe he's not dead. And as I got uh, closer, I started calling him. Like, maybe he'd pop up his head because, I I don't know, I just had that fear of going up to him and, and, and seeing his his dead body. It was it, it was fearful. And when I called him and he didn't come up, then I'm like, I knew. Okay, he's not responding. He's dead. So I came up to him and I started calling his name. And I see him laying there and his eyes still open. And I see his, his poor head. He's getting rained on. He's on the cold ground. His eyes looking. And I put my ear to his um to his body and I didn't hear him I didn't hear his heartbeat and I just pulled him close to me and I loved him so much I had problems with my marriage and my wife left me for, for like four or five months but this dog never saw any faults in me every day I came home and he just loved me it was unconditional love so I'm I'm sitting there New Year's Eve in, in, in where I walked him around the schoolyard and I held him close to my body and I'm crying and the, and the rain's coming down and it, it hurt so much and with my dog I, I know when, when people die they have a soul and either they chose uh, to follow Christ or they didn't that this is the deal that God has made with us the whole human race was condemned to death and um Satan got Adam and Eve to disobey and they were sentenced to death and this is why we have hard work this is why we have disease this is why we uh, die um, this is why every misfortune we have on this planet whether it's a tsunami or a car crash or slamming your fingers in a car door or, or people killing one another it's all because we're not doing it the way God God wants us to do it so God looked down the whole race and he still had compassion. He still sees in every single family. He still sees when someone's dying and the whole family is crying. And, and he had compassion. So he let his son enter the human race and he preached, come to me. I can give you eternal life. I have the power to forgive sins. Jesus at one, one occasion, he looked at um, someone had a paralyzed hand and he wasn't supposed to heal on the Sabbath. And he, and he said to people, uh, because he was telling this paralyzed man, your your sins are forgiven. And everyone's saying, who can forgive sins but God? So Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, well, is it easier for me to say, get up and walk, paralyzed man, or your sins are forgiven? To prove that I have the power to forgive sins, I'm going to say, get up and walk. You know, talk is cheap. Oh, yeah, you're forgiven. But if you're not forgiven, it doesn't mean anything. But if he's able to do a miracle, something that mankind can't do, is 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 make a paralyzed man walk and, and he's able to take away sins he's able to verify that the oh god it was the only one that was capable of healing uh, a man who was totally paralyzed in the first century and, and if god is healing that person then uh, at the command of jesus then he's forgiven um uh, that person at the command of jesus so jesus uh said get up and walk proving that he had the authority to take away sin so if you repent of your sin and follow christ and you're in a relationship with God. You're not rebelling no more. And where you failed has been washed uh, uh, washed away. And um, this this death of my uh, dog has brought me closer to God. It brings me uh, clearer the picture of life. That Satan wanted all of us to have a death sentence. That's why when someone talks about Christ, there's always someone in a crowd that will go angry and try to physically stop him. 
Because Satan knows that some people are going to listen to the gospel and not be condemned. He wants each and every one of you to be condemned to hell. When you are crying because someone died, you get a phone call 3 o'clock in the morning that 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 maybe your father or your, your brother or God forbid one of your ch uh, children or a knock on the door from a police officer. Uh, are, you, are you the parent of so-and-so? This is what Satan wanted. He is our enemy. He wants to, he, it's, the Bible says he walks around like, a, like a, a hungry lion looking who he may devour. And he wants to devour us. But God sent Jesus and we could have eternal life. And this is the works of the devil, making everyone rebel against God. And they could be sentenced. He knows Satan's going to hell. And he wants every single last one of you to reject God, rejects God's offer for, to be pardoned, to be forgiven, and and to follow of to follow Christ. He he wants that. And um, yes, we 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 uh, we suffer and we die. But the the good news, the gospel is the good news that Jesus came as a man. It's, it says the word became flesh. God became flesh and he dwelt among us and he, and he loved us and he preached to us and he showed us his compassion and he healed every sick person. Every sick person, it says he had such great compassion for. It says out of his belly, it, would, it, it bowels of, of compassion. So like God sees everyone who's hurt, everyone who's lost a loved one, everyone who's suffering from an illness, Jesus wants to fix all that. He took, he took um, agony on the cross. He didn't want to go to the cross. He even prayed to the Father three times, take this cross from me if it is possible. But it wasn't possible to take the cross and still save humanity. So Jesus bowed his will to the Father and died and took all the death sentence for the whole human race. Where Adam and Eve failed, Jesus succeeded. He obeyed God. Satan told Jesus in, in the desert, come and worship me and I will make you the greatest king on the earth. And Jesus chose to die the cross and to obey the, fa the Father so he could save me and you. And all your grief that you have, this is what motivated God to save you, to come and give us his son. How much more love can he have? I, I see you lost your child. I'm going to give you my child so, so your child can live. And there was a criminal dying next to Jesus and he reached out to Christ for salvation. And uh, he said, Jesus, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus said, this day we will both be in paradise. So, you know, Jesus fulfilled prophecies, proven he, he was the one sent by God. He did miracles and he left an empty tomb and he left witnesses that believed it so much that he saw him risen from the dead. That they were willing to uh, suffer persecution and be executed for it. So Jesus left evidence that he truly was the, the, the son of God. And this is our only hope. If, if Jesus is not who he says he was, then let's eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow. Tomorrow we die. Tomorrow's going to come. Nothing's going to stop time. Nothing is going to stop your destruction. Nothing is going to stop your destruction of your family. The Satan did a pretty good job. But Jesus talks about um, after your mortal body is dead, that he's the resurrection, that you go to be with him in paradise. And then, then when he comes back, he's going to raise the dead who believe in him first to eternal life. And the people... When Jesus comes back, the people who haven't died yet, they're going to meet him in the air. And their, their corruptible bodies will turn to incorruptible. So when I, when I read the scriptures, it talks about God wiping away the tears of death in, in heaven. No more death. No more uh, uh, sorrow. It talks about an, an, another place that we are going to li live in him. And, you know, I look forward one day to see the people that, uh, that I lost. That I will see them again because... Just like God had the power to put us on this planet to make this just universe, a lot of things had to be done for him to bring matter and energy from nothing, fine-tune it, make all this happen. There's so many things going on for us to have life right now. It's You listen to a scientist, he could go on for days about all the things that God has to do to hold this universe together, to make it work just just right. If we have a just right a sun. There's no other um, star in our galaxy that we can take and replace the sun because it's fine-tuned. There's no other 
a, a moon that is like our moon. It's it's fine tuned. Our planet is fine tuned with ingredients with oxygen, and, and, and then you know it's it's tilted at the right way, going at the right angle in the habitable uh, zone, and then you know all God had to do to um uh, uh, make. Uh, chemicals turn into a cell to pro produce mankind and evolution is like 10 to the 26 millionth power that that it happened by chance so it wasn't chance because it was impossible a chance could do odds that that great and then they don't know where consciousness comes from the brain because consciousness doesn't come from the brain it, it comes from your soul so that's why they cannot find it in in, in the brain and then people have near-death experiences i had had one one myself it just goes on and on of, of all the evidence for God. So my, my hope is in Christ. And I know uh, my dog, he, he wasn't a human being. And the Bible's silent about getting pets back in heaven. But I suspect that we will. I suspect that God will give us the desires of our heart. And Jesus said, you know, ask me so your desires may be filled, that your joy may be filled. So I, I, if God gave us his son, how much more will he give us all things? And I'm in, I'm in heaven. And I desire... That have my dog back and God certainly has the power to do whatever he wants to do so I, I, I think the Bible doesn't say it one way or another about pets but I knowing God and how good he is and how he's given us everything I, I believe even uh, your pets will be restored because that's another work of the devil you know we had a loving relationship with our animals and our animals were taken away from us and I'm, I'm sad it's like and I cried today in Dunkin Donuts parking lot because I miss my dog. He was my boy and he he he, lo he loved me. And now, you know, I used to take him for a couple of walks a day. And now I can't do that. But um, I have hope that uh, uh, the Lord will grant me back and give me my, my dog. And I was watching all these videos about families. They had um, uh, 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 dead loved ones. And then like f for whether it was a Christmas or a birthday or just people were giving them pictures of the photographs uh, of they had it like all blown up. I don't know if it was painted or I don't know if it was just pictures blown up, uh, camera pictures blown up, but they would look at it and cry. And I saw the hurt of humanity. We're all in the same boat. We all are walking around hurting. It's like who alive doesn't have people that, that they have lost. Of course, it's like you're going to hear about people dying until it's t your turn to die. But uh, God gave us his son and he made another place. And Jesus says, I'm going to take your soul and then I'm going to resurrect your, your body. And that's that's the predicament we're in now. And all we can do right now is just, you know, love Christ, have a relationship with Christ, be reconciled. It's like we were, we were off from, from God. We were cut off because of sin. And then God, you know, like when the angels uh, rebelled against God, he didn't give them a Messiah. He didn't die for them. He just uh, made a day of judgment that's coming in the future that he's going to cast them all into hell. But mankind, he chose to have mercy on and he sent his son and he's offering a pardon to everybody who uh, would be willing to believe in Christ. And that, be that word believes in Christ, not just believe in the existence of God. Um, the devil believes in the existence of God. It, it means to uh, follow, to have a relationship, to go by his rules and his rules. His rules are good. You know, thou shalt not kill. Uh, don't commit adultery. Thou shalt not lie. F forgive others. It's all his rules are easy. But we have to repent of, of our life if it's keeping us out of the kingdom of God. You don't have to be perfect because, uh, to come to Christ. But you do have to give up these terrible, terrible sins where you're really hurting somebody. That will keep you out of the kingdom. You know, you know he doesn't expect you to be perfect. But he expects you, you know, killing and... and, and uh, uh, um, lying and stealing and, and you know just living living an evil life that will keep you out of the kingdom you need to repent of those so uh, we're all in this together and when and I saw um, all the people suffering it's like I, I love everybody and, and who everyone anyone who has lost someone I'm sorry and I pray that God comforts you and I pray um, uh, that, that you find Christ and and you have hope um, you know, just look at this world and that's it. Yeah, your, your, your loved one's taken away and that's it. It's not it. Jesus gave us hope and we shouldn't mourn like we have no hope. We shouldn't mourn like, okay, I'll see you again. I love everybody. Bye.